We are Campus Attic, by fans for fans, where we're always huge supporters of Punky Boners. Punky Boners? Oh, Oregon's homecoming queen in 1952. So any Duck fan worth their feathers knows that Dee Dee Hall was the first building on campus, Fallard Hall was the second, but what was the third? Well, we're going to explore that this week. It's a long forgotten part of the University of Oregon's history, but a pretty interesting one. The observatory on top of Skinner's Butte. In 1878, when the university was only two years old, funds were raised for an astronomical observatory. Josh Walton, secretary of the Board of Regents, purchased equipment back east while on a trip to Philly, including a $900 telescope, a solar compass, and a side reel clock. But where do they build the observatory? At the time, Dee Dee Hall was the only structure. Do they add it to one of the Dee Dee Hall spires? Do they create an all-new building? For nearly a decade, that was argued, during which time Villard Hall was built. In 1888, they finally decided. The school bought land on top of Skinner's Butte and built a small replica of Villard Hall, complete with a retractable roof for views of the night sky. Classes in astronomy and celestial mechanics were held inside. But there were a couple problems for the building that made it kind of doomed from the start. First of all, it was quite a trek for students to travel all the way to the top of Skinner's Butte from campus. And second of all, an open roof to the night sky really doesn't do much good during the school year in Eugene, when most of the time it was cloudy and rainy. In 1890, the school bought Collier House from Professor Collier, located across 13th from campus. Today it's used as offices for the music department, sandwiched between Johnson Hall and the EMU. But at the time, Collier House came complete with a barn, which was rebuilt as classrooms and an observatory known simply as Barn Hall. It stood where Hendrix Hall is located today. Barn Hall made the observatory rather useless, and it quickly fell apart. In 1897, somebody actually stole the telescope though that was found a month later in a sack under the crosswalk on Lawrence Street. A year later, the university declared that the building was available for, quote, other purposes. Whatever that meant. The observatory became a favorite hangout spot for vagrants, as well as couples seeking a little private time, because of course there's nothing sexier than an old abandoned building where homeless people sleep. To this day, the top of Skinner's Butte is one of the more popular places for couples to seek a little private time. Uh, and of course it was immortalized in the film National Lampoon's Animal House. Interclass battles would take place up there and it became a tradition for freshman classes to tag it with their year. But in 1905, with the building long abandoned and an eyesore overlooking Eugene, the school appointed the university steward, Lewis Johnson, to quote, dispose of and remove the observatory building without cost to the university. Now, Lewis Johnson tried to sell the old abandoned observatory, but nobody wanted it, at least not at the price that the university was asking for. So he came up with an alternative solution, dynamite. Around 1 a.m. on May 12th, 1905, the city of Eugene was awakened to a huge explosion, blowing the old observatory sky high, leaving nothing more than a wrecked shell looking like an ancient Roman ruin. Conveniently enough, the timing of the explosion just happened to coincide with University Day. So later that afternoon, engineering students finished off the last of the observatory with yet another explosion, followed by a large cleanup project. If you go to the top of Skinner's Butte today, there's a little lookout and a plaque where the observatory once stood, a largely forgotten but dynamite part of Oregon's past. But one tiny piece of the observatory still remains, and students walk by it every single day without noticing. Across from Hendricks Hall, where Barn Hall once stood, behind the EMU, there sits the University of Oregon sundial. So that's it for us this week. Keep checking back. It's always game day.